I've seen these particular lights in various outlets and I'm pretty sure that Poundland has had these for a while, but I've never made a video about one. Well, I don't think I made a video about one yet. Uh, but as this year is very, kind of, a, it's because of COVID, Poundland doesn't have a lot of stock. I thought, well, let's take a look at one of these. It is, it is all ground mounting light. Comes with protective film. It's got two LEDs and a... Uh, the four strips of solar material. Each strip is about 0.5 volts. It adds up to about 2 volts. That's used to charge the battery. What's odd about these particular ones is that they have a little inductor and a step-up circuit on them. Actually on the actual printed circuit board itself. It comes with uh, this stake. I'm pretty sure the previous ones you could uh, actually screw it down, but this one doesn't seem to have that. Or it could be wrong, maybe it is. We'll explore it afterwards. But it has a stake so you can mush it into the ground. And visually, well, I'll show you what it looks like. I shall turn it on. I shall take the exposure off. And then I shall turn the light off and we'll see what it looks like. It's not bad. It's okay. Uh, the light is coming back. Watch your eyes. Let's take it apart. At this point, uh, no, I'll show you that afterwards because there's something interesting. So I shall pop these screws out and we'll see what batteries are. I wonder if they've used a tiny little button cell or if they've used something beefier like a AAA or AA. Be quite good if they've used the latter. These have been available in various forms over time. The, the very thin shim of material. The solar module, a little plastic cover over it. This sat into a little recess. It is sat into a recess. Let's see if I can get it out of the recess. Oh, it's a decent sized battery. So this system is different from the normal solar lights and there's only two connections coming off these. One of these is going via the switch to the positive and the negative is going to its own dedicated terminal. But one of these terminals here, the positive, is actually the positive connection to the solar panel. I'm just going to mark that. I'm going to mark it positive, just in case I do something terrible. And I shall mark that one uh, negative for the battery. And this uh, panel is very familiar because I've had one before which has four LEDs. I wonder if, did this one come from Poundland as well? Not really sure. But uh, if we zoom down in this, you'll be able to see that uh, it has the inductor and the chip on board. Right, tell you what, I'm going to see if I can read this number. Oh, you know what? Is that uh, the resin has not stuck to the top of that. Right, one moment, please. I'm going to see if I can find a data sheet in this. So that chip is the QXS521. This is the best I could find online. I couldn't find a specific data sheet for it, but it's like the classic uh, solar garden light type chip. So here's the LED. Here's the little nickel metal hydride cell. In this case, it's a, uh, this one, what value is that? It's a miserable 150 milliamp hour. That's very small. Is it going to be super light? Yes, that's like these batteries you get from eBay that say 9,900 milliamp hour, but they're really absolutely light and they're just a fake value. That happens a lot. I've not tried buying one recently, I should. So here's the solar panel, what they call solar plant here. And in daylight, there's a little module in here, a little bit of circuitry that measures the voltage in this solar panel. But it also, in here, there's effectively... a uh, diode so that uh, when the sun shines uh, it effectively charges this battery the inductor is 47 micro henry in this instance it's marked 47047 47, and zero is a multiplier that's quite a low value that equates to a higher current when you use a lower value uh, inductor uh, and maybe they've done that because it's small. I'll show you this other one because it's uh, easier to pick up. 
And the, by using a small inductor, there's more chance of the resin going over the top of it, though it is just kind of surrounded by the resin. It's wicked around it. As with these LEDs on both these units, if anything, it may be a good idea. Given the top of that chip was exposed, it may be a good idea to drizzle a bit more resin across it. But here's the operation. Uh, when it, uh, it detects it's dark, this circuit kicks in and effectively it bridges this connection over to the negative, but it does it as a series of high frequency pulses. And when it does that, uh, this end starts off negative and gets pulled uh, positive and that end gets pulled negative. Now, normally the battery, the, though it's effectively uh, across the LED with inductor in series, very little current is going to flow. It's going to be leakage current more than anything else because the LED typically needs at least about 2 volts before it will start conducting. In the case of the white LEDs, it's about 2.4 volts before they start conducting. So this 1.2 volts or a peak of 1.5 volts fully charged is not going to go through that. Have, if you've ever seen these uh, solar lights that uh, when it's you ho hold it out in daylight, uh, the LED lights up. What's actually happening there is the solar... The, the battery has uh, failed and it's gone high impedance. And what happens is the solar panel is effectively just lighting the LED directly. That points usually at a faulty battery or the little battery switch connection, which is uh, in series with it. But uh, in normal operation, when it wants to boost the voltage, it, this end is connected to the positive battery. This end gets pulled negative through the circuitry. And then it turns off, and when it turns off, this end goes positive, this end goes negative, it effectively goes in series with the battery. The battery's already got about 1.2 volts, that then adds a bit more on top, and then the current can flow through the LED and make it light. So the LED is actually lighting as a series of very high-speed pulses. That's about all there is to say about these. It's a very minimalist circuit. So there's scope that uh, the worst thing that could happen, really, in these... Uh, the construction of the unit is fine. It's got loads of drainage holes around the edge. If water did get in, it's theoretically going to find its way out of those. The middle area, the circuit board sits in quite snugly, and then there's this plastic housing that then cups over the top of that. It's quite well designed. But uh, technically speaking... Oh, there, I've actually just pulled it off. That's that's annoying. Right, OK, so uh, that quite easy to break as well. I've just snapped the little strip off the back of that. It's no great deal. You could tack a connection onto that. But uh, also, if you really got desperate, you could probably drill a wee hole in if you wanted to salvage one and uh, access the soda joint that way. But uh, yeah, quite easy to break. That's good to know. But the middle bit has no drainage holes, which means that there is a risk that moisture is going to gradually ingress because as the heat uh, of the day heats this up and the air will expand and then if it's raining and then there's a rim of water around the edge as the air cools down again at night it will suck the water in it's just it happens with lights it happens all the time uh, this one I could actually swap this one to that is it going to be compatible is it the same size let's just shove it in and see what happens uh, yeah it does appear to be compatible I'm guessing it's probably really from the same manufacturer. It's the same sort of layer. But that's a Poundland's solar light. It looks all right. It's reasonable construction. You have the option for putting a better battery inside. Um, and it looks okay. Just be careful when you take it out. You can snap these wires. Uh, I shall try repairing that. Just because I feel I need to. But there we go. Poundland's Solar Garden Uplight. It's very simple. It's nice that the electronics are mounted under the resin. It protects them. Uh, there's no separate circuit board. All that's on the back is the switch, which can be shorted out, to be honest, because they're unreliable when water gets into them. And the battery, which uh, it's fully accessible. So it's a very serviceable looking light.